Okay, I, I, I'm like a nutty professor out of control here. Welcome back to the Meat Grinder mod, folks. It's time for more free-for-alls where every one minute someone will be eliminated starting at 10 minutes. We decide it by who has killed the least. We'll be tracking their kill progress for the entire game. It will not reset in this iteration, but it will be brutal. It will be fast. This will be a 17 minute maximum eight player free for all. That is crazy. And the best part is, after telling them that this is gonna be faster version, that you don't have much time to work with, between selection and randoming, collectively between them, practically all of them got sieves that liked to fast castle. <laughs> I absolutely love that. And we have got some high rankers in this, right? We've got four conch level players, two diamonds, and two unranked. And one of those unranked, I believe, yeah, he's conqueror in team games. So we actually collectively have four conchs, actually, to be realistic about this. Um, and two diamonds, and then one unranked. Rumpy being the unranked, bless him. Um, we saw him spend a long time in Dark Age, so... Oh, Rumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Look elsewhere, bless him. I don't know if he's going to have a good time here, especially when his neighbors are Chris and Hosen. So we've got double HRE, double Iobid, Order of the Dragon, Byzantines. Gully's somehow getting Byzantines again. Uh, so we tried this before on a 12-minute first elimination, and we realized that it gives a bit too much time to TC Boom. I wonder who done that. So we fixed it. It's now going to be 10 minutes for the first elimination, and every minute past that. Um, usually when we play this game mode, we have the timer, we have the value rather reset after each elimination, we've changed it here. So the, because every elimination is a minute after the last one, we decided to stop pile the timings to have this kind of really cool short kind of team deathmatch or, or rather free for all deathmatch type feeling to the game mode. And I love this from Gully. Last time he went for the Grand Winery, right? This makes a lot more sense. Imperial Hippodrome, you need to be fast, you need to be furious. Neighbor-wise as well, he's got what, Ibis in the north side. He's also got the HRE of the south. So good raid potential. I like the idea of Explorators in this game mode to kind of just escalate your gold income really quickly. We'll see if it works out for him. Uh, reminder, by the way, the, the way you get points is based on what you kill. So if you kill a villager, that's going to be uh, 50 resources. If you kill a house, 50 resources. If you kill a scout, worth 70. If you kill a knight, worth 240. And it will accrue the points here. All players in the games can see this, by the way. They can see this information. They can see their score. They can see everyone else's score. So there's an interesting strategic layer where you can kind of play the map and play people against each other. We've even seen some amazing plays, like, for example, Don Arty holding a dead player hostage to eliminate someone else as well. Little thing there. Uh, Rasselbock has added in a bunch of new functions. So one thing we've got here is if a player eliminate, is eliminated or surrenders, uh, it's going to add half of the time until next elimination to the timer. So in this case, let's say we are 20 seconds away from elimination for a player, but someone surrenders. Because we've got a minute gap, it's going to add 30 more seconds on. So it just gives a little bit more wiggle room for someone to do something so they're not screwed by someone just grief surrendering out of the game. What was going up pretty early from Nomad. Oh, you cheeky son of a... <laughs> Wait, what? What is that spawn? Why are there free relics in the northern corner when he's playing Order of the Dented? Excuse me? <laughs> okay. So, Kai, you created this map for us. It's called Minimap Dry Arabia. It's like a four player map size for eight players. Seems like we've got some teensy, wincy, incy, dincy spawn issues still to work out. Nobody has claimed a single head so far, by the way. And that has me a little bit worried. Because in the event that multiple people have the lowest score, all the lowest scoring players get eliminated together. They hold hands and they skip off into the woods. Ooh, cancel on the outpost there. Sormian was trying to get a defense up. Wait, was he really going for fast castle? No, he's landing in Raxes now. He's accepting he has to hang around here. He's next to an Order of the Denta player. He's next to a Hippodrome Byzantine. Makes a lot of sense you're going to have to play this. And Sormian safe. Lamet throws away the scout. You want Lamet actually going into the horseman? The amount of people that I'm expecting to play cavalry here. I actually think this kind of favors the, the spin builders in the early game here, right? Because it allows them to kind of protect themselves more easily and get some freebie kills on some high value targets. So, you know, it's interesting to see the different balance because when you escalate the, the kill phase of the game like this, 
Some sieves are probably going to look a little bit better than others. Ones that kind of have premium access units at the beginning of the feudal, like, for example, English with Lombos. But I do think it's possible for most sieves to still play, and we've seen that already. We've even seen people being able to get Castle Age and get a few knights out to actually save themselves from elimination. Krent. Wait, Krent? <laughs> I called it. I said some people would just rush Castle Age. Kren, our former gold turned diamond, is on his way up into Castle Age already. He's only got four minutes and a bit to work with here. But considering he's pumping Palace Guard already, this is going to work out fine for him. He's already scouted that Hosin is gathering resources away from home. This is a vulnerability point. Because Hosin has also gone for that Castle Age rush. So much so, he doesn't even have Wheelbarrow. A detail that Crane can notice if he just clicks on these villages. <laughs> and yes, this is a Shallow Monastery. So expensive unit, but also fights back really well. This is a rush for the relics in the center. And it's crazy because remember, Nomad blocked this one off, right? He walled it off. So <laughs> the easiest grabs for Kren are inaccessible in this game. Two relics now on the way home for Hosin. And I don't know where Krent's response is, right? The racks wasn't supervised, so the initial pass guard aren't coming out quick. A little bit surprising. I felt like he had enough resources to get them out quicker than this. Lament, in the meantime, actually has struck back, so it looks like he found a few kills with the horsemen. In fact, I think, did he pinch one of Gully's horsemen, maybe? Did you can feudal rush in time? Um... You can get Chuganu in a Ram, you can climb car. I actually think Chuganu, Juji, in this mode with this type of timing makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's a little bit slow after the first elimination or two, but the whole point is you kill enough efficiently in the early phase that those first two eliminations buy you time, right? Flash coming in, house guard. Oh, going to get baited back towards the wall low, but not quick enough. Krent has got a kill. So looking relatively safe compared to some of these people. Nomad. Wait, where is he? He's in the teal, right? He needs to make a move, man. He needs a kill. He built those horsemen earlier. He didn't find anything for it, right? In fact, can we check where that horseman went? Um, I don't know. Like, no one killed it, so I'm not sure what happened. He did have a horseman, though, right? I'm not imagining that. Did he delete? Because we've actually put a punishment in for deleting units. Uh, I think it works mainly for the buildings. Need to test on units, but basically you lose the value of the units when you delete them. I think it's half the value, but you can't go below zero is the catch. Moving in now. Saw me in. Trying to save himself here. Outpost is definitely going to go down. That's worth 100 resources. Gully Deck on the meantime has teched up in the castle and he has got some kills, so it looks like he might be safe. Hosin and Rumpy are the two at risk here. <laughs> oh my god, dude. This is going to get so, so uncomfortable. Nomad has actually farmed up a storm. Sormi may have just fed him a premium position in this game. Gilded Archers now even able to trade out up against these horsemen. This was a mine work build, right? Yeah, so he's got the steeled arrow. Meanwhile, other side of this, Sormi doesn't have any blacksmith upgrades. This army's going to get wiped. Good micro by Nomad. Double the score now to the person in second place. We're now a minute and 20 seconds away, and it's starting to become undeniable that Rumpy is going to be going up first. Poor guy. <laughs> I think this is a bit too quick for him. It may not be to his pacing. It seems like he's a, a, a pretty chill player. I know it's like he did mention he didn't like the idea of this mode when I was saying, let's do it. Um, the other people wanted to. But the issue for Rumpy on top of that is like, realistically, even if we've done the slower timing, he seems to be lacking the ability to get any kills in these, these early games, right? Convincingly. And, and that's an issue. Even if we had this every five minutes Elam, if you're not able to find kills in the first 10, 15 minutes, you're going to be going out. Pull one out for the lad, though. 40 seconds out, and now he has to get 220 resources at least. And that's if he just wants to drag Hosin down with him. Needs more to survive. Nomad is looking very content in this game. I think he's got the right approach here. Mass Gilded Archers, I love it a lot. Especially against an opponent who keeps forgetting about Blacksmiths. Undermesh came through way too late in this game. Villagers now being pulled to deal with the outposts. For some reason, I guess no chill is the answer. Nomad absolutely farming it up. 2,350 when nobody else has broken 1,000. A good, strong way to start off a game that is already halfway through to its completion.
Pull one out for Rumpy. Next up on the drop block, Lamet needs to find some head soon. Outpost going to go down. Villagers also in trouble. Gilded Archers are just machine guns when they get to stand still like this. The Villagers not going to be quick about the breakaway. Not able to be. Also some throwaway on the Horsemen here, right? Like this spawn is kind of ugly. Rally points need to be changed. Lamet contesting into Chris's base. Chris doing pretty well on the trade here. He was greedy as all hell, though. He went for the car stage rush. He actually went with the logistics wing, which... Wait, why? Why? What? I... But... Oh. <laughs> Chris. Oh, buddy. Did you really think in a game that had two HREs and an Order of the Dragon and another Iobid player that at ten and a half minutes there would still be relics left? I mean, I guess the healing's efficient here. Lamet didn't survive that trade. Chris did. He's still in second place. We are down to six. Krent needs a fight. He needs a blood bath right now. That is not a good start. Hosin says, yes, please. <laughs> I have got lands next. I love how Hosin, whether it's Order the Dragon or HRE, they always do the same thing, which is spam Lansk. And pretty effective here, considering this matchup is power scar spam, right? Even the Shaolin Monks are going to struggle against that much cleave. No mad. Pretty chill right now, for good reason, right? He's got at least two minutes to work with. He's on his way up now, finally, with the Burgrave. I really like his comp for this, this type of format. The Gilded Archers can do a lot of work. Cataphracts are going to be spicy and difficult to deal with, though. Gully needs to get on top of this. Nomad actually may have just thrown away an expensive army. Has he just done it again? Has Gully actually managed to get what he needs? Start a step back, but this Cataphract so insanely tanky. Raw HP just so big. But Gilded Archers also tanking themselves, right? 125 HP each. Nomad has not queued up the Archer upgrade yet, though. That's kind of weird to see, actually. Spearmen are going to move in for a good trade, and I think Gully may have thrown away a little bit too much here. In the meantime, another player goes out. Wait, who did we just lose? Was that... That would have been Chris, right? Chris went out. Player on the left side. So we're getting tight. We're getting cozy over here. Still? Oh, sorry. He hasn't got the upgrade. Um, I'm an idiot. Nomad didn't finish the tech up yet. <laughs> I thought he'd rushed it a bit quicker than that. So now he can go for the archer upgrade. He has got the required amount of gold. It's crazy how well he traded there. But I've, I've got to highlight a mistake made by Gully. Like, he didn't go for undermesh at all. If he'd rushed towards Undermesh, which you can do with a level 3 assistant, it unlocks insanely fast here. You're now seeing him finally do it. That would have been enough, I think, to break those Gilded Archers, and it would have made it for a good trade. But instead, now, Gully throws away a lot of expensive units. The only reason he's not going out next is because Krent looks like he's next in the chopping block. He cannot fight up against Hosin like this. Okay, Hosin has a problem, though. Hosin has a really, really big problem here. He needs to run fast. He's got a minute to consolidate himself here. He needs to be in the base of Nomad. And actually, let me check. Has Hosen scouted? No, you can't. Not like this. Oh, no. He, he doesn't know. So, little tip, right? When you play this game mode, I think it's absolutely paramount that you keep scouting. You need to reveal the entire map because it's going to matter when you're down to the final three, final four. If you don't know where the, the final players are, Right, because you can see their names, you can see their colors. You would have scoured them, you'd be able to tell. But for Hosen, he's barely seen any of the map. Lance neck. Oh my god. <laughs> Gully has a very big problem. I feel like you need mangoes. It's the only way you're going to break this, but then you might just get kited. Hosen, in the meantime, coming around the back. Lance neck going in. Needs to gap close this quickly. Line formation. Nomad cutting him out, though. And that's it. Gully's gone. He will not win back to back. We're down to two. <laughs> Nomad, these guys are so stupidly tanky, though. The lance neck. The backstab comes in on the mid arms. That surely is it. Nomad, there's no way. There's no possible way he loses this now. Great micro. He sniped out all the lance neck that Hosin brought with him. And now, Gilded Archers, sure they're not the best at trading here, but they're not terrible even when you've got the plus two upgrade and your opponent only has the plus one. Lance Neck to sweep up the last of it, and that is going to be GG. Well played, Mr. Nomad. I think this is his second game ever of 
the meat grinder mod. And he impressed me. GG comes out. He is going to claim the dub. Early aggro into a late win.